What's going on everyone? Well, even though this is time rift, but in this video, I want to talk about SP Hine. So I just unlocked him, got his new skills like you can see here. He is, well, he's not OP, but he is actually very, very strong. Definitely great, a great addition if you have him built already as SR. He's upgraded to SP and his stats is pretty much like almost the same, a little bit better than before. And once you unlock the second part of the skills, he gets 5% five HP, 5 HP and defense extra. So here, like you see, there are three stacks. So this one is his regular talent. This is the Thunder and Fire. So I'm going to talk about the talent. The talent, right off the bat, when you deploy him in the beginning, he already gets two stacks. So that's really good. Okay, Can be stacked up to four times. With his exclusive, you need his exclusive to unlock him. So you most likely would have the exclusive equipped already. And the exclusive will allow him to be faction buffed by princess and five stacks. So right off the bat, you get two stacks. And this skill here. This skill here is really good. When you cast, you will get this thing called damage dealt. It's increased by 50% deal extra fixed damage. Ultimate um, this thing, 3C. Magister. So when you cast, this thing becomes 50% more damage and deals 6 damage after. So really, really good. And after that, you can act again. And then, last but not least, you will be able to get this shield. It's kind of like Arian Rod. You get like a shield that is magic damage taken. It's reduced by 30% last 3 turns. It will break once it takes a hit. So, yeah. So, how do I say this? So, we have two talent stacks, we have two thunder and two flame. So every time you end in turn, every time, but you have to not do anything. If you do something, if you do something, you will not get. Okay, so after taking action, randomly gain thunder or flame. Can be stacked. Before each battle, grant. So okay, my mistake. Whenever you use a skill here. So when you click into this book, you have three skills. You have teleport. You need two thunder and two flame. This one is a single target skill. You need four thunder, and this one you need four flame. So when you use any of these skills, you will not get the buff. For example, um, we'll talk about in let's say Apex. Usually in the beginning of the battle, that's when people start to set up. You'll probably use the act again move, and boom, you will get stacks one of each. You can see one of each. So that's really nice. If you decide to attack, that's cool. Let's say I'm gonna attack. And I get four stacks. So the talent met the maximum requirement right off the bat in turn one. So the fifth one will be the next turn, which is from the exclusive. Okay, so first I'll talk about the teleport. So basically once you have your stacks, click into this two cost book, you can find your skills. This is your teleport. Uh, so you're gonna teleport. Before I see that. This is like a weaker version of Iris teleport. You can see you can teleport increases their damage dealt by ten percent. Uh, Iris has it twenty percent for two turns, but this one only lasts one turn. So I'm gonna teleport. And you can get the stacks. However, whenever you use a skill inside the arcane tomb, there is a cooldown of one turn. Okay, so the thunder skill right here for four cost of the thunder stack, and right here, range is, th is three blocks. Attacks a single enemy dealing 1.6 times damage at the cost of four stacks of thunder, with a bonus when battling against cavalry. Before entering battle, range increases by 1. So the range increases by 1 also applies to the troops. So sorcerers you can't do, you can't hit at 3 range unless you have the Scepter of Divinity. Which means if you have Scepter of Divinity, you can hit this at 4 range. So I'm going to turn on animation just to show you, the, show you guys that the sorcerers do hit. Like that, lots of damage and very good range. Okay, so next I'll talk about the AoE, this flame here. 
attacks multiple enemy units within the span. Dealing 0.38 times all your damage at the cost of 4 stacks. Extra effective against infantry units, the enemy takes fixed damage equal to 1 times the caster in after they take action next turn. So this one is uh, it's okay, the range is pretty good, it's kind of like his meteor, but enhanced version I would say, there's more damage. Boom. Okay, so last but not least, I'll talk about his 3C. So if you guys have used him before, his 3C was so poor, the range, because this 3C gets stronger with a wider span when he has more stacks. So when he doesn't have any stacks, so right now it's already two stacks. So back in the days, we're talking about like no stacks is like right here and doesn't doesn't really do anything. So let's say for Apex, now you get the option to hack again, get into a closer range. Even though it's only three stacks, but you can see that it will hit everyone. Before it was so poor, it'll only hit like you know across, across as in across like cross. That's what I meant. But now it can hit everyone, and this deals extra damage as well, fifty percent more. And then that fixed damage on top. So that's really good damage. And do not remember, like do not forget that this one when they step on it, it reduces their mobility which allows um i mean which it disables their guard so the way i did the 3c breakdown before so the way to prevent it is if you have like overlord badge if you have mass resist whatever that can help you reduce the mobility then you can immune to this but otherwise it's pretty scary like you can see if they they just loses their um mobility and you can get your other heroes to kill these squishies or whoever is not guarded so yeah it's good it's really good even though the cooldown is pretty long but i think this usually would probably determine the match and this is also a good way to counter for example in pvp you would play against lolly bozo or olandius then you can probably erase his or hers um tiles Okay guys, so now I want to talk about how to build him. I didn't make like a proper guide like I used to for a hero build because I would assume a lot of people know how he is played. He His playstyle is exactly the same except that he he just has more options. He's a little bit better than before. Not like a whole lot but definitely more viable. And instead of waiting for like 5 turns to unleash his full potential, now he can do that in 2 turns. Okay, two turns you'll get that 30% max with your exclusive, 30% in increase. So I would say building him, I'll first talk about PvE. PvE, if you are going to build him, you can just literally stack as much in as you can. Because you do have your guard, um, your tank to protect you. When it comes to Apex, I think building a lot of HP might be important. Because there's a lot of strong physical... AOE dealers such as um, Reen, Himiko, Ares. So if you can't survive, you can't even use him to, you know, unleash his true potential because he's already dead in the battlefield. So next, you probably want to stack some defense. Mine is not very good, and our magic defense, whichever you prefer. But HP, I think, is really necessary. And then in, I think the in will come. Like I think anything over four. 20, 30 is more than enough because that times 30% of your in in game. You can't see it now, but it's there. It's probably good enough to like kill stuff. Okay, so I would say red moon, blue moon, perfect. Tenyo rope. Um, if you okay, if you're doing single target, I think the scepter is probably the best. Not gonna lie. Now you can do four range attack. That's really good, but. The downside is that that four range, you can't use it every single turn. Whenever you use it, you, there's a downtown, and then you gotta accumulate the thunder. You gotta wait a few turns to use it again. And then in the beginning, you need, you will use up all your stacks if you don't use the teleport. So I don't know if Scepter is the best choice, but if you're playing like a slow tank push game, I think Scepter would be a good option. Otherwise, um, I think Red Moon is pretty balanced. You can use AOE, you can use your single target whenever you have your um, stacks. 
Um, Mirko Staff is also really good because he has two very strong AoE now with the, um, the stacks here. What would you call it? They call it flame or something? Whatever. The AoE attack that you have inside this arcane tomb. And you have the 3C. This will make the 3C even crazier because it's 15% after you use this. It's 15% increase. And on top of that, from Mirko Staff, that's another 15%. So 65% in total. So that's really good. But, uh, depends. Now your single target skill or your normal attack is a little bit weaker. Preference how you want to use it. And then when it comes to the rope, Tenure Rope is usually the best, in my opinion, for any mages. Because you just gives you HP and 30% chance to dispel one enemy buff, which will probably help you survive. Don't use this because you can't heal. Healing effects increase by 2%. This is useless and it gives you magic defense. Other than that, you can definitely try to use this one is also really good, but only when melee attack. Otherwise, it's only giving you that 5%. And then there's this new... I think there's another one that gives you 10% HP or I'm just high. Whatever, you guys figure it out, but um, Tenyo Rope can't go wrong. But I, I, I Or all the other ropes because I have so many Tenyo Rope. Okay, now exclusive. If you're not using the exclusive, which there's no reason not to, it's really good. It gives you HP. Um, then use Tenyo Rope because with your hack again, you are now capable of giving two random debuffs to your allies. Uh, honestly, if it's not that, then I guess you can use Soul Stealer if you're really aggressive, you're close to your opponent. But Tenyo is probably the best choice if you're not using exclusive. Now, Star Earring. I think it's pretty good because you can probably now survive against Assassin. Really depends how much HP and defense you have on your character. Um, if not, the Holy Ring, Holy Ring is really good. If you don't get silenced, then you're always you're Gucci, right? You can always um, cast skills. Uh, Fedaro is also very good. Basically, whatever increases in. I was choose between Star Earring, Fedaro's, or um, Holy Ring. Holy Ring is probably the best choice. For me, I haven't tested it. The reason why I have Star Earring on right now is because I have this one here. And I'm still deciding which one I want to use. I have to do a lot of testing and stuff. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward when it comes to the build. And yeah, if you guys are looking forward to um, seeing him in action, I will be using him this weekend in Apex. Alright guys, thank you for watching and bye bye.